Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media. Just taking a look at Boom Studios 2022 trade paperback release of The Many Deaths of Lila Starr from Ram V and Felipe Andraj, although I believe it's Felipe Andraj, I believe he's Portuguese. And what we usually do at this channel is just give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across this book in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Now, for those of you who've been returning to this channel, yes, you guys already know how much I love hardcover, so whenever a trade comes out and I pick it up, that's usually a sign that I don't believe the publisher will come out with a hardcover, but I love the damn story. Like, so damn good. So, in that sense, I guess I kind of threw the cat out of the bag when it came to the review part, but I don't mind. I guess now onto the exterior. Uh, yes, you'll see, of course, some apricots, some fuchsia, some teal, and I like how it extends upon the spine and its exterior. So you are getting your typical fare in terms of a trade. In terms of uh, bonus material, I guess sometimes in the vein of a trade, yeah, in this case we're getting just variants, but I believe like the first one, the meat Malavia's, yeah, this one here, this one's incredible. Uh, I would love to hang this on a wall. It's very evocative, especially after you read the story, so on point in that sense. And I think the next best one is this one here from Kegel. Yep, there it is. Uh, I don't know why, but this one in particular, I mean, aside from like its European influence, um, it kind of reminds me of uh, like those Masaki Yuasa anime films or shows. So, you know, with the elongated or exaggerated limbs for the anatomy. I don't know why, but it just definitely evokes a lot of that. And yeah, I think you're just getting like a Christian Ward and a Martin Simmons. Martin Simmons, uh, he reminds me a lot of Sal Abenanti. Probably more detailed, but Sal is awesome in his own way. So thank goodness for that. And I think you just get bullets. Yeah, you only just get bullets of a creative team. So I appreciate it there. Yes, he is Portuguese. I thought so. All right. But all besides the point. So uh, I guess to prepare you for the story, as you kind of notice with these other books, Norse Mythology and The Hostage, which is like Brazilian mythology, uh, this one focuses a lot on the Hindu faith, or should I say the Hindu deities. Um, the main character is Yama, the god of death, or in this case, the goddess of death. And yeah, I guess if you're not too familiar, don't worry. You only need to know, like, yeah, Yama, the goddess of death, Brahma, who's like the creationist god. Kind of, In this, he's kind of like the leader of the gods kind of thing. And then there's Prana, who's like the, the god of breathing new life. You know, like the life, breathing life into all things kind of thing. It's hard to explain but it's so quickly, but anywho. Um, I guess the plot of the story is that uh, essentially... Uh, yes, Yama. I'll just call her the goddess of death for you guys. Um, she's called into her, called into the office by Brahma, the leader, and essentially just gives her her walking paper, saying, "Hey, um, turns out we don't need you anymore, so you're fired." Hence the big what there. And it, and essentially the plot is, Brahma's just discovered that there's actually to be a mortal, a regular person to be born who's going to discover the key to immortality. So basically, that's why God, the goddess of death is being fired. There's no more use for her. So send her on her way kind of thing. And they send her on her way in the form of going back to Earth as a, as a regular human being. And I like how like she has those anxieties about becoming a human being. You know, like now I have to get used to all the neuroses, the idiosyncrasies of being human, all the paranoia. So, you know, obviously she's naturally ner nervous. And when she does finally come to Earth, she inhabits the body of a recently deceased young woman, Lila Starr, hence the name. And I'll just refer to her as Lila moving forward. I love this particular page, though, because of her love, those eyes, man. Those are always, like, the key identifier. It's her. They do change, but dang, I love this particular page. I don't know why. And the ongoing joke in the series is that she keeps encountering this person, the, the person who will invent immortality. I'll name him Darius at this point. Uh, but she always accidentally either comes across him and actually helps him, or she doesn't really take the opportunity to get her job back by killing him. And the funny part is, by the end of every issue, she basically ends up dead in every issue, which is funny. Um, and that's where Prana, the, the one who gives a uh, life or breathes life into beings comes up and
and every time she dies, time passes. So next time she sees Darius, he's old, he's now like eight years old, and then he's like twenty, then he's like thirty six, and then he's in his sixties or whatever. So each issue is kind of in that vein where yeah, she's just always trying to hunt him down. And she never hunts him down the way she wants to. And she ends up helping him in some way, either through giving him advice or, or whatnot without realizing it. And every issue kind of plays like a parable. Like uh, there's like a new, you know, little story, a new little anecdote in Darius's life that kind of explains where he gets the inspiration to come up with the concept of immortality or designing immortality. So definitely unique in that sense. Uh, you're probably noticing it as well, and this is kind of why I mentioned the aesthetic with the motif. The entire book ha carries that forward. So you, as you flip through pages, you'll actually notice, yeah, it keeps that theme going. So very appreciative that Andraj went in that direction. But hey, it always takes both parties to do it, so the writer definitely had a take in it. And I like how every time you know you, you go through time with her, uh, like, it's her experiencing another form of life. So, you know, this was the one where Darius is in college. So she's more of, like, a hedonist at this point. Just live life whichever way you can. Just enjoy it. Uh, but, yeah. I like how, like, every single issue has a different take or a new concept to introduce. So Ramvi, clearly, you know, he had a message to tell. It's more than just the ruminations of life and death. It's that he wanted to teach the reader or show the reader the message that he's trying to present so very on point in that sense now it's an overall beautiful book i do pray it does get a hardcover one day uh but all in all i'll definitely take this because it's a nice pick up and go it's about just i think shy of 200 pages so it'll be a quick read for some folks i think it was only like five issues uh, but all in all an excellent package um but yeah at the end of the video here i wouldn't mind hearing your thoughts in the comments down below just the same and maybe just as one little reminder uh apparently i noticed this the other day uh the channel is actually reaching its 100 subscriber mark so first of all thank you to all of you returning viewers and maybe you newcomers here um what i do plan to do for the 100th subscriber when i reach that milestone is maybe just do like a giveaway i'll do like a question and answer kind of video and yeah, at the end of that one, I'll probably just do like an Amazon gift card kind of jazz for you guys. But hey, uh, it's more than just the, the lucrative aspect of it. I wouldn't mind more so hearing your thoughts and comments down below if you've come across this or maybe plan to come across reading it in the future. But y'all folks take care and enjoy the rest of your day.